measures are enforced to prevent the entry of any exotic parasites or diseases. The first generation of beetle was bred from the imported eggs. Never leave the quarantine area. And eggs laid by these beetles have to pass through a highly effective surface sterilization process. Field releases of beetles are only made from later generations, mass spread from these first generation African species. The imported eggs must be provided with suitable breeding conditions. The dung beetle team set to work to roll handmade dung balls from local cattle dung. As egg consignments may number up to 1500 or more, this can be a lengthy job. Cavities made in the balls provide a suitable breeding chamber for the beetle eggs. are packed in sand inside their incubation tubes and sprayed with water to ensure they retain a sufficient level of moisture. Except for the eggs, all imported material is sterilized as a further precaution that nothing undesirable is introduced. From egg hatching to the emergence of the adult beetle may take between four and eight weeks depending on the beetle type. Mass breeding of selected beetle species takes place under laboratory conditions to produce sufficient numbers for release in the field. In the beetle so far introduced into Australia, two types of dung dispersal behavior can be seen. The first can be illustrated by the tunneling beetle. This builds its nest directly beneath the dung pan. In order to film nesting activity, an artificial soil profile has been prepared in a sandwich of two pieces of glass. The beetles work in mated pairs. With amazing vigor and determination, the female excavates tunnels in the soil, pushing the soil to the surface in front of her with a bulldozer action. She constructs the egg chambers, or brood balls, from dung material, which has been pushed into the tunnels by the male. In warm soil, the beetles work rapidly, building a brood ball about every two hours. After egg rolling, the female seals off the entrance to the ball. The larva hatches after about three days and starts feeding on the brood ball. It eats the solid dung material as it has a well-developed biting and chewing mouth. On the other hand, adaptation in the adult has produced highly specialized mouth parts which are only capable of sucking the liquid components of the dung. The young beetle passes through its pupil stage and after about 35 days emerges as a young adult to dig its way to the surface and migrate to new dung pads in the vicinity and begin the cycle again. The second type of dung dispersal behavior is dung ball rolling. The ball rolling beetles disperse the dung by breaking off fragments and forming them into balls. There isn't always honor among ball rollers and beetles may sometimes buy for possession of a ball. But the rightful owner usually manages to beat off the intruder. <laughs> With prodigious energy, the ball rollers go about their work, often molding and maneuvering lumps of dung far larger than themselves. <laughs> <laughs> At the chosen nesting site, Damn. the female climbs onto the ball and excavates a chamber.
The ecological imbalance which resulted from the introduction of domestic livestock into Australia without suitable dung bearing beetles was not relieved by the naturally occurring beetle species. All right, we weren't going to say anything, but we were laughing because uh, they said the that they, they were going to beat off the other person if they answered their mound. The native beetles couldn't deal effectively with we're the learning about dung beetles today. from domestic livestock. This cattle dung is the chief breeding site for pest flies. The bush fly in temperate areas. Feeding off your and the buffalo fly in tropical areas. Apparently very crucial to survival. Studies carried out in temperature control in sectors have established that speed of dung burial by beetles is a critical factor in fly control. This time-lapse sequence, filmed over some 43 hours, shows the activities of beetles in breaking up and burying a dung pad alongside a control pad where beetles are absent. If beetles are sufficiently numerous and active, a cow pad can be buried within the first 24 hours. At this rate of disposal, fly development of dung will be severely restricted, and the few flies produced okay. will be stunted, short-lived, and incapable of laying many eggs. On the left, fly reproduction has been normal in the pad where beetles this were isn't, This isn't fly the gang, uh, gang brand. We're still going to do that. There's going to be like 20 of us eating cereal. Tried to ask the uh, singer of Evanescence if she wanted to come over and share a bowl, but I'm still waiting on a response. We'll get back to that. This is not a dung bearing beetle, but feeds directly on the fly larder in the dung pad. No dung pad adapted hysterics were known to exist in Australia, so this beetle species too had to be imported. Particularly after periods of lean food supplies, hysterics can show extraordinary enthusiasm for their work. North of the Tropic of Capricorn, the dung pads are the breeding grounds for the buffalo fly. This is a major pest of livestock in areas such as coastal Queensland, the Northern Territory, and the Kimberley region of Western Australia. Infestations can number thousands on one animal alone. In the past, chemical sprays were used to control the buffalo fly, but their use has now been restricted to avoid problems of chemical residues in animal products. A fly may bite an animal 10 to 12 times a day. This causes extreme restlessness in cattle and can lead to sores around the animal's eyes and lesions of the hide due to the beast's efforts to relieve the irritation. We're just trying to keep it real. We're, we're learning. The dung beetle can play a key role in tropical areas by dispersing the buffalo fly's breeding sites. In heavily stocked cattle country, dung lies around wastefully blanketing significant areas of pasture. The amount of dung dropped by one animal in a year can smother and alienate up to Brings one up tenth of an acre of pasture, and there are if some the comes in, we're cattle have to in the <laughs> Where the pads are left undisturbed, you already know it's the way the dung beetle. concentrated dung nutrients stimulates a rank fringe of grass growth which is unpalatable to cattle and remains ungrazed. Where dung beetles are active, this loss of pasture is avoided and pads are rapidly broken down. Grass growth actually benefits from dung nutrients released and combined with the soil. In the long term, the level of the nutrients will rise with the continued burial of dung. And that was cereal, ladies and gents.